and welcome back to That's English. Uh, hello. Did you have a late night, Ashley? Yes, sorry. I went to a movie marathon. It didn't finish till seven o'clock this morning. Really? Well, that's a long session. What did you see? A complete programme of Alfred Hitchcock films. Fantastic. I've got the brochure here, if you want to look. Let's see. Wow. Hmm, they have a lot of really good old films and no new Hollywood blockbusters. Super producciones. Amazing. I know. I really prefer my local independent cinema. It has some great special film festivals that you never see at the big cinema chains. And do they show indie movies there too? Yes, they do. They showed an interesting independent film from Afghanistan last month. Ah, and I see there are some Andy Warhol films on next week. Do you fancy going? Oh, I don't like avant-garde directors much. OK, I'll go with Javi then. Well, less commercial cinemas show a greater variety of films, but they also have their problems. Yes, as we'll see in today's documentary. And here's our question. Why do people go to the cinema, according to Gary? Let's watch. Nowadays, when people go to the cinema, they usually go to a multiplex, a cinema with lots of screens. These cinemas are usually part of a national or international chain. But many towns in Britain offer an alternative, independent cinemas. These don't normally screen Hollywood blockbusters. They focus on things like documentaries, avant-garde, and independently produced movies, or indies. So how does a small independent cinema compete with the big chains? We came to the Phoenix Cinema to talk to the manager, Gary Baker. We need to get people into our cinema, and then we need to make sure they have an enjoyable experience, which makes them want to come back again. To attract an audience, we need successful advertising and to show interesting films. For advertising, we still find that a regular brochure is very effective, and also local newspaper ads. It's also important to use digital media. New technology allows two-way communication, so our customers can give us feedback and tell us what they want to see, what they like, and what they don't. Gary and his team manage the Phoenix by organising movie marathons and film festivals on themes such as ethnic minority cinema. The cinema can also be hired out for private parties or for corporate events. Another very popular new initiative is the live screening of operas from top venues, such as the Glyndebourne Opera. The cinema also has clear educational objectives. For example, working with schools. We find out what the exam texts are for the term, and then we show the film. If, for example, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen was on the syllabus, we organize a screening. We do the same for subtitled foreign language films. Inviting a guest speaker, such as a director or a critic, is very popular and is therefore another good way of using dead time before and after screenings. Our staff must know about films. And of course, it's essential to provide an excellent sound system and comfortable seating. In our modern digital age, can independent cinemas survive? There is competition not only from the multiplexes, but also from cheaper DVDs and now from online streaming of films. People come to the cinema not just for the film, but for the total experience. We believe that coming to watch a film at our cinema is so much better than watching it at an impersonal multiplex, or on a small TV, or on a computer screen at home. Independent cinemas may have hard times, but one thing is certain. People like Gary will fight to keep them alive. They make sure that we still have a wide choice of films to watch at the cinema. And for that, we should be very grateful. I like the idea of hiring out the cinema for a private party. Alquilar el cine. 
And showing operas live is also an interesting idea, isn't it? It is. Parties, operas, educational events, all these different ideas are a good way to attract an audience. You're right. And it helps an independent cinema compete with the big cinema chains. Now, did you get the answer to our question? Why do people go to the cinema, according to Gary? Let's watch it again. People come to the cinema not just for the film, but for the total experience. We believe that coming to watch a film at our cinema is so much better than watching it at an impersonal multiplex, or on a small TV, or on a computer screen at home. So the answer is, people go to the cinema not just for the film, but for the total experience. I think that's true. You can stay at home and watch a film on DVD or on your computer, but it's not the same as going to the cinema mm. and seeing a film on the big screen. Well, the UK film industry has produced some fantastic movies, but cinema is also a global business. So let's discover what our international friends have to say about this question. What has your country contributed to the world of film? Um, the big thing that New Zealand has contributed is Lord of the Rings, obviously because of our beautiful environment. Australia has a very vibrant film industry. We have big film studios in both Sydney and in the Gold Coast as well, which bring a lot of outside industry into our country. I would have to say America has contributed to the world of film, which is my all-time favourite, is Disney. you got to love Disney movies, I know I do. The film industry is pretty huge here in Britain, but, you know, people may not think it is that huge in regards to Hollywood, but, you know, we've got films that have made such a huge impact, something like Slumdog Millionaire to Harry Potter. Bollywood is the biggest film industry in the world, and there are hundreds of films made um, every year in different languages. Jamaica has location. We have the sun, we have the sea, and we have the beaches. And sometimes they come and then look for a location. Sometimes they want to film me. <laughs> so every country has made a contribution in some way. Yes. People think of the USA and Hollywood, but countries like India have a huge film industry. Bollywood. Mm -hmm. Well, in today's episode of That's Britain, Elizabeth goes to Castle Coombe and Laycock, two very beautiful villages which are often used in films. They're perfect for a film set. Yes, these villages are quite unusual because they have no TV aerials or satellite dishes. And there aren't even any telephone wires or poles. Anyway, while you watch, see if you can answer this question. What has been filmed in Laycock Village? Let's watch. <laughs> Hi there. Today we're visiting two small villages near Bath. They've both been used as a locations for several films and television dramas. This village is called Castle Coombe. Right in the middle is this old market cross with an old water pump. Now there's an unusual cottage over the road. Let's have a look. And there are two nice old pubs, the Castle Inn and the White Hart. It's a perfect, pretty English village, isn't it? But what's most interesting about it is what isn't here. Yes, that's no TV aerials, no telephone wires or poles, no satellite dishes, hardly any shops, no modern buildings, so it's perfect for films set in the past. Some of the films that have been made here include Wolfman, Stardust, Steven Spielberg's War Horse, and one of Agatha Christie's stories, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I'm here with Mac, who lives in the village. Mac, what's it like 
having film crews? They normally take up five, ten days shoot. Uh, slight inconvenience, but everyone's compensated for that anyway. Fantastic. And I, I noticed that you, you've got some cakes here. That you make yes, them yourself? Yes, I do, every day. Well, can every I buy day. a chocolate? Sure, cake, help please. yourself, yeah. Do all right, that enjoy that. I will. Thank you very much okay, indeed. That's, that's all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What do you think of this place? Laycock Village. It's over a thousand years old and it looks like it's hardly changed, doesn't it? Well, apart from the cars. It's been used as a location in several Harry Potter films and in lots of TV dramas. This is Laycock Abbey, a private house owned by the Talbot family from the 16th to the 20th century. Henry Fox Talbot invented photography here. These cloisters are part of the ancient abbey. You may also recognize them from some of the Harry Potter movies. I'm at the Henry Fox Talbot Museum in Laycock and with me is Robert Bridges who's a member of the museum staff. Hello. Robert, can you tell me why he was so important? Well, Henry Fox Talbot invented the positive negative uh, photographic process and he lived here and this is where he did most of his work towards that end. Well, that's all from Castle Coombe in Laycock. When you next see a British film or TV drama, keep an eye out for one of these villages. You may see them. In our next programme, we're heading to Bristol. So see you then. Bye. Well, it must be difficult for the local residents in those villages when so many people come to live and work on a film. Yes, maybe. But the man from Castle Coombe said they are compensated. They probably make some money and it's great publicity for the places. So, did you get the answer to our question? What has been filmed in Laycock Village? Let's watch it again. It's been used as a location in several Harry Potter films and in lots of TV dramas. So the answer is several Harry Potter films and lots of TV dramas have been filmed there. Those old cloisters at Laycock Abbey are so beautiful. And Laycock is the place where photography was invented. And it's also an ideal place to make a film. Absolutely right, Annabelle. Well, that's all for today. See you next time for more That's English. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.